All right, you guys, so today I got my k and cold air intake, and I'm about to install it in the car. So the first thing you're going to want to do is disconnect your MAF sensor here, and then loosen this up. I'm going to loosen this piece here last, because I, I want to remove this piece last, but then just pull out the air box after you disconnect the two screws on that side there. So I'll get that pulled out, and then I'll get this piece here installed in it. Alright, and when you do pull it out, do be careful, because mine got caught on this piece right here, and as you can see, it just sliced my finger. This little sharp battery cover, when I pulled it up, just sliced the whole, whole layer of skin off, which is always nice. Great. So I don't know if you can see just how it just, it was like, um, like taking one of those potato peeler type things to it. And yeah, it hurts like a bitch. I mean, like, great, man. I'm going to have to go get a band-aid. But you're going to want to then remove this screw here, and I'll, I'll just get to it once I get the band-aid. Alright, now that I've got my finger all patched up and such, hopefully it doesn't bleed through the band-aid, we can get back to it. I just, like, literally just woke up, so I'm, like, extremely tired. Like, wow. Alright, so it's one of these weird-looking screw-type things that I need. But these are the only ones I have, so hopefully these are, these are big enough for it. Well, none of those tools worked, so I'm going to use this one here that I bought like a long, long time ago and see if this, this will work. Guess it would help if I was videoing it, but that worked. And then that's where we'll end up putting the uh, box type thing there. So I'll do that and then I'll pick the video back up. So the way this fits on is after you get that removed is this piece attaches here and then you'll attach the old OEM one over there. So I'm just going to put that in. put that in right there and uh, the instructions didn't say anything about putting this one back in so I'm just going to hold on to this one or I don't know if this will interfere with if it'll interfere with um, the filter I can't really even get it back in oh there it goes just line it up and I think I'll put it in there and see if it see if it does anything. Tighten it up just in case. And this little tool is a. Uh, Kind of annoying to use in here. So that's on there tight. Now I guess I'll attach the uh, filter. All right, you guys. So here is a video of what it's like to be driving with these SLP loudmouth axle backs, and these are not. Ugh, it stinks here. This area always smells like, I don't know, like bad farts or something. Even with pollution mode on, it's still getting through. Ugh. 
Ugh. But anyways, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's driving at 68, uh, around 1900 RPMs. There's, there's, uh, it's, there's no drone inside the car at all. And I guess once I slow down, then you can uh, maybe hear some drone, maybe. I don't know. It's not exactly drone. It's mostly just, you know, the outside exhaust note from the uh, mufflers. Man, it stinks. And uh, I also have the uh, cold air intake. So, can you hear that? That's just the exhaust back there. The, the cabin ride is uh, decently quiet. I mean, at lower, like, low, low RPMs, like whenever you're at a dead stop and you start to go, I don't know if it's exactly drone, but I think it's just the, uh, the sound that the mufflers are putting out, because, um, this is nothing like what it used to be before, where the drone was so bad that everything inside the car would rattle and, you know, I'd get a headache because of the low bassy sound that, you know, to the point that, you know, it made me want to uh, feel like as if I had to vomit, and now it's just, uh, as it is, as you can see, you know, very little drone, I, uh, that sound, I don't know if the phone is even picking it up, but I, I'm at 1900 RPMs doing 69 miles an hour, and, you know, it's just the outside, it's not, I don't hear it coming from behind the seat or under the car like I did when I had the uh, stock resonators in, and the only things I've done to my car is I had the uh, the muffler shop get rid of the mid pipe and install an X pipe. I have no idea what kind they put in. I think it's just some generic crap that they had laying around because they charged me 150, and that was to cut it off and you know dispose of it and put the new one in, put the X pipe in, and you know and the shop fee and everything. So I'm pretty sure it was just the, like, cheapest generic X-Pipe that, say, I don't think it's like, a, I don't even know what brand it is, if there even is a brand. I could get under there, but I doubt that I'd be able to see any type of branding on it. And then they cut out the resonators, and that was, I believe it was $60 is what they charged me to cut both of them and just put, you know, just some straight pipe, uh, two, 2.5 inch straight pipe in, in their place, and then, so it's practically all straight pipe except for the X pipe, I guess, <laughs> and there's, uh, the RPMs, and there's a, I don't, I can't say it's drone because it only, you know, I hear it coming from outside the car, not from within or underneath me, like I did with what it used to be before, and so, I mean, the drive is uh, pretty quiet, you know, it, it's not going to bother anyone who's not into cars or, you know, who hates loud cars or anything, you know, it's not, you know, no one will say, you know, oh, your car sounds like a Honda now or anything like that, and I'm not using the uh, throttle controller just because of the, um, after I installed the uh, cold air intake, the 0 to 20 miles an hour, you know, the, right around in that range, once you get past 2,000 RPMs from doing a 0 to 20, the car just feels extremely sluggish, and you can, and you feel just how heavy this car is, but after installing that cold air intake, it, it feels floaty, is, that's the best way I can describe it, it feels floaty doing the 0 to 20 from a dead stop, it's like the, it's like the car has no issue getting up and going as as it did before, where, you know, you would feel the car, you know, slowly take off, and then it would eventually, you know, suck you back into your seat, but now it's like you can, you can gas it, and it just goes, and you don't, I don't feel, you know, it doesn't suck me back into my seat, so I don't know if I lost a little bit of low-end torque or what, but it, that's just how it feels, and then I guess I'll play some music and, you know, Hopefully not getting any copyright stuff, but I mean it's like an old country song. I'm just out of Memphis. There's the 
there it is at like 30, so you know. So as you saw, even, you know, the radio covers it, covers up any of the sounds that you might hear. So, pretty decent. I like where she sits now. And that's a really catchy song, too. It's called uh, Guitar Town by, I think it's Steve Earle. It's like a like super old country song, and that's the kind of country music I like, where it's all catchy and, and stuff. But... I, I don't think I could do the farm life again. Because growing up we had cows and horses and uh, like a giant ass farm. And oh man, it was a lot of work. And then back in the day I always wore a black cowboy hat and boots and spurs. And everyone called me Jesse James. And I was like, oh, Jesse James is white, but okay. I was like, can, can I just be like a, a Cherokee Indian or something? Oh man, oh good times. I guess that's a, that's like something that a lot of people wouldn't, you know, <laughs> take me as. And then you know, <laughs> being Hispanic, and they're like, "Wait, what? You grew up in the country? Your country? It's like oh, <laughs> you don't want to see me fish, though." <laughs> oh man, you think you think I get mad when I when I run over possums, man? <laughs> nothing more frustrating than losing your own your your best lure that you bought off an infomercial <laughs> stuck in a fucking tree <laughs> oh man oh that just ends up with me throwing the whole the whole freaking uh freaking pole into the river and saying fuck it I'm done I'm just gonna go buy some fish Oh man, good times. Ugh, and I hate how my entire parking spots are taken. Well, I guess I'll end the tape there. I would do a little wide open throttle here, but I don't know what the car behind me is because it's got its brights on and it's coming up on me pretty fast. So it's not, you know, I would, wouldn't want to risk it. So I think I'll just pause the video and then once there's like, once they're gone and there's like a complete, uh, like right now, you know, it's just completely empty. So, but I could, but then, you know, there's that dude or whoever that is back there. And I drove past the cop because there was construction. So I don't know if it's them, you know, getting on and there's now two cars back there. So it's, you know, not exactly safe, but maybe I'll just get it up to speed. to the speed limit and you know there was a I guess if you could hear that just some slight drone but it's mostly just the outside noise coming from the exhaust that's making it and the car feels definitely a lot lighter with this intake but again I just don't like don't like the way that it changed to the sound of my exhaust so we'll see how it goes I mean it's slightly a little bit louder like when it's when I do a remote start the car sounds uh, at maybe one one or two times louder than what it used to be and then like I said the little raspiness that goes on whenever I switch gears is just really really annoying so we'll see how how it goes and this car here is going to overtake me I don't know what it is. Kind of looks like. Oh, oh, that I didn't try anything because that was a police officer. So got that one on video. <laughs> oh man, it's always some sort of shit on my channel that you know it's like fuck, man. It's like, well, I'm glad I didn't, you know, kick her up to 90 and such, because, man, there would have been a serious ticket. Oh. But, damn, that dude, that guy is like, all of that. Oh, and I can't 
can't answer the phone while I'm driving. 